So can you hear me? I think so. Okay. No, it's turned on. I can hear the. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, thank you for the opportunity to lecture here in a very nice school. So what I'm going to tell you about, or try to tell you about, is an interesting connection between uh, uh, black hole entropy and Chern Simons theory. So uh, I, I think that by now we all know that uh, entropy of a black hole or Bekenstein Aki entropy uh, has this uh, form, uh, formula here. Area of, of the horizon over 4G with h bar equals to 1. Um, <clears throat> and this is really dimensionless, okay? There's no Boltzmann constants. <clears throat> and uh, on the other hand, uh, Trim Simon's theory. is a three-dimensional theory on compact manifold was Lagrangian as the following form. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll try to explain how we can use uh, Chern Simons theory to compute black hole entropy. Now, the first thing you might be wondering is that, well, this is a very geometric uh, quantity Right, it depends on the area, on the metric. So how can we describe black hole entropy with chern simons theory if there's no metric here? It's completely topological, right? <coughs> it's topological uh, theory. Um, but uh, I'll try to show that I'll try to show that in these lectures, the chern simons theory uh, can be used to probe the black hole at the microscopic level. It will know about uh, some discrete properties of this black hole entropy. So what, what do I mean by this? In the full quantum theory, as Samir explained, uh, this S, which is, uh, will be a logarithm of some number, omega, n, in a certain regime, uh, will be described by the bekenstein hawking area formula. But this number will suffer corrections of, uh, schematically of this form. So this is dimensional S. I can expand in this parameter. OK, you'll have things like this. So there will be, uh, uh, this is a very general, so there will be a series of perturbative corrections to the entropy. But uh, in order for this to be a, a log of an integer number, you need that you also include non perturbative corrections of this form, where these gammas A and B and Cs are constants, okay? So it depends on the theory. So if you're a god and you want to compute the full black hole entropy, you'll find this type of corrections, okay? What I will explain uh, or, or try to describe is how this uh, Chern Simons theory can help you figure out uh, all these numbers, including these non perturbative uh, corrections here. <clears throat> okay. And the, what I'll try to show is that um, once you do this Chern Simons analysis, in principle, not completely, but uh, you'll be able to recover uh, the full integer or the entropy as a log of an exact integer. Question? Yeah? It just needs to be a provocative. Just the first line, the provocative series. Yes. The, no, no, not over there. I was looking at the yeah. clock. That's right in front of you. Yeah. The provocative series, is this for ensemble or not? I don't know, but I, I won't. In this case, it'll be very simple. And it'll be, it's not even uh, divergent, uh, asymptotic. It depends on the limit you take. In one particular limit, I'll show that it's asymptotic, okay. but there's a closed form expression for that. So it'll be for borrow some rule. In that case, does it have a... Yeah. I'll show the formula. I'll show the formula. Okay. And it has the exact formula. Okay. 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 So 
Uh, and then um, I will describe some connection with uh, Samir's story by uh, reducing uh, five-dimensional theory to uh, four-dimensional uh, theory. <coughs> so, okay, so, okay, a bre very brief outline of what I'm going to do is that uh, in the first part, I'll basically describe what you are asking for, the grand, grand uh, uh, the exact answer. I can just pop it. Exact answer. And the second part, um, I will review some concepts of uh, Chern Simons theory. This theory, uh, flat connections, um, topology, uh, knots, all this story. Review very uh, schematically. And the third part, I will try to do the computation with Chern Simons and compare with some exact answer. So I'll basically describe some um, uh, Sugra solutions and uh, do trend Simon's computation, okay? So before going to the, um, the microscopic, I just want to um, describe a bit of the context of the black holes I'll be considering that are important for this computation. Uh, so Samir talked about the ADS2 times S2 um, <coughs> in uh, ungauged gravity. <coughs> so everything I'll say is supersymmetric ungauged supergravity. Okay. But uh, the interest of this computation is actually, so this is 4D. I always have in my mind that five dimensional, so there'll be an additional circle <coughs> in the story. You can think of this as the M theory circle. Okay. Now it happens that for uh, uh, interiors with eight supercharges, solutions that preserve the full supersymmetry must be of this form with this circle actually fibered over this space. And this times S2. So basically I have a family of uh, black hole solutions on which case you have one extremum. One side of this uh, family of solutions you have a three sphere. So this is S2 times S1. So a circle fibered on S3. On the other hand, you have the ADS2 times S1, where S1 just fibered over ADS2, and it's two sphere. And this space here is uh, locally ADS3, so it has a negative cosmological constant. Okay. And in, the, in between, you have a complicated configuration, which I will not be considering. So everything I was going to say is about this problem, this type of configuration. Because then you can just reduce on the circle and obtain the solution. And why I want to do that? Because this is locally ADS3, and then I'll use the ADS3 uh, CFT correspondence to correspondence uh, to compute some path integral on, on this uh, space. I think uh, sometimes, yeah. There's always an ADS2, there's a black hole. It's like a BTZ black hole, but it's rotating. Yeah. So here's the non-rotating case, and then you have rotating black holes. So this here is twisted, so it's not really. And you have, uh, and because the circle is fibered over S2 and ADS2, there's a rotation and a charge, under charge. 
this case is particularly useful, as I'm going to uh, mention. So you'll have uh, this metric here. I'll, I'll explain this in more detail, um, perhaps tomorrow or on Saturday. But just to give you an idea, so this is this is the black string. So you have a metric of this form. And you have the circle, which is far over radius two. So this uh, close the client gauge field has support on this space here. And the solution in 5D is very simple. So you have this metric, and all the gauge fields are just uh, flat connections and carry some, some um, there's some phi eyes here, some whistle lines. Okay. And then you have also you have also um, magnetic fluxes on the sphere. So I'll put here uh, A0 such that the A0 equals the volume form on the sphere. Okay. So this is the rack, uh, the rack gauge field. <coughs> what is nice about this solution is that um, once you do the dimensional reduction, for example, you just put the phi i's and then di's plus a, <coughs> and then you have to subtract the phi i a, and then you have p i times this cosine is theta uh, d phi. So this is the, 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 the gauge field that Samir is working with. This will be the, the four dimensional gauge field. Then it, then it becomes, sorry, this is, yeah. So the, the, this uh, close the client gauge field, hey, <coughs> you can see this is a phi naught minus one dt, this is the coordinates that Samir was, was using this metric. Okay. Then you get exactly uh, the gauge fields that Samir was considering. Okay. This is just the dimensional reduction of that. But the key point is that uh, why I'm saying this is, is because in 5D, what you'll have, the solution is basically uh, this locally, um, locally ADS3 solution. And then all the gauge fields are, have this uh, flat connection part and the magnetic part. And all the scalars in 5D are just constant. And then you know that, um, then you can show that uh, the metric and the gauge fields are solutions of, a of, a, of 3D gravity. So these are solutions of, um, 3D gravity with a cosmological constant, plus uh, there'll be some abelian gauge fields, and also be some uh, some non-abelian gauge fields. <coughs> so sorry for being a bit sketchy. This is, so for the moment, it's just motivation. The the I'll be more precise next ne bigger? bigger. Okay. What here? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so it's like the minimal, um, the minimal theory can construct such that this is a solution. Okay. And that's what when the Chern Simons theory will come in. 
Okay, but let's get to something a bit more precise. So this ADS2 times S1 uh, is somehow, you can see as a states in, uh, in ADS3. So it's a, uh, it's a configuration in ADS3. So you'll be looking at states on a two-dimensional CFT, okay? So what, do, what I'm going to argue is that uh, the number of black hole states equal to the number of EPS states in a 2D superconformal field theory. Okay. Now, it was mentioned before that to count EPS states, uh, well, it was mentioned in 3D, but uh, I'll do the, the same, uh, I use the same idea, which is to use what is called elliptic genus partition function, so you take a trace with minus one f, for the f of the Fermi number. And then you have your, uh, this is on the cylinder, you have the Hamiltonian, L naught is a very zero generator. You have the Q bar part. And then you introduce a uh, chemical potential for the R symmetry generator. So this f, will be um, some combination of JL and JR. So uh, I'll be using a notation from two comma two superconformal criterias. Okay. So these are the uh, R symmetry generators. Why do I want this? Because uh, in many cases, you can, you can compute uh, this lytic genus when the theory is free or weakly coupled. So you just have to solve the Hamiltonian, count the states, BPS state, and so on. But because it's a protected quantity, you can extrapolate this, the, the, this, the, the partition, the, the, this partition function to a regime where the theory is strongly coupled, which will be the black hole. It's the usual story. Now, I may, may ask uh, if this little genus really computes the entropy of black hole. I'm not sure if Samir is gonna explain that. I will not explain that too. So I'll just assume that you can. Yeah, there can be a difference. It's simple charges, sorry. Uh, left and yeah, central charge, right. Yeah, central charge is in the sense of what some, some of the algebra. Yes, yes. Um, so just a small comment. This is completely different from computing the statistical partition function where you do not put the minus one f, you just keep the one here. Okay. 54, q bar, L not bar and so on, so this is not protected, okay? But that's what you should compute, actually, to compute with, with comparable black hole entropy. Now, because you have a supersymmetry, roughly speaking, the input is supersymmetry, so in this case, it'll be like on the two sides. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, this operator is roughly speaking uh, Q closed, this is a supercharge, this is a Q square. And so when L naught bar CR to the four, so if you have a state for which this is different from zero, as you know, you can always act with a Q because it commutes with that, and you find a pair of states with different fermion numbers. So when this is different from zero, you find a grading by the supercharge, so they carry different Fermi numbers, and the Q bar 
um, a contribution will cancel because of this minus one f. It's the usual with an index argument. So this object ends up to being allomorphic, depending, on, uh, depending only on Q. So this chi tau z then becomes this trace JL, where I just put the L naught minus CR 24 over 24 equals zero. So it is allomorphic. <clears throat> Uh, one important comment, I will actually be super in, uh, interested in uh, 0, 0,4 sigmoform field theories. So just a comment here. I'll be interested in 0, uh, 0,4 sigmoform field theories. Is that related to uh, the MSW CFT that corresponds to basically an M5 brain <coughs> wrapping? Uh, divisor in Calabial. Okay. But in that, in that case, the story is a bit more complicated. It will take me a lot of time to explain. Yeah? Okay, so this is a 0, 0,4 CFT. Okay, so this is a Theories. This is the MSW, model center astrometer in Witten. Okay. <clears throat> but in any case, the story is a bit more complicated to analyze. It will take me a lot of time. So I will restrict to 4,4 or 2,2, where these objects are much simpler to analyze and tell you uh, what, what I'm looking for. Um, Now this object, because you're computing on a conformal field theory, superconformal field theory, it, <clears throat> it will be a reparameterization invariant, including, so this object chi tau z uh, is a, a modular object. So what is a modular object? Uh, let me just give a simple example. Uh, in, so here you have two complex variables, but for example, take um, just one variable. Uh, this is, it is a function, so a modular function. is a function that takes um, a tau in the upper half plane, to the complex numbers. So it's just the fact that the imaginary part of tau is bigger than zero. And it has the following property that um, phi of a tau plus b, c tau plus d, omega phi tau, where this a, b, c, d, is an SL to Z matrix. So everything is integer and determinant one. Okay. <coughs> yeah. The mathematicians call this a model form. And a model form oh, is for. Zero. Sorry? I think in the mathematics literature, strictly speaking, this would be called a model form. And a model form is when W equals zero. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. So thank you. And, and, and because if you think, if you put a, a, a function on a CFT, you expect it to be a modular invariant, reparameterization invariant. So what Samir is saying is that this weight uh, tells it is some sort of anomaly. So you should call it as a form. So there's some sort of a volume dependence that will scale with this weight such that everything is invariant. But. <clears throat> Okay, one nice example of a modular form that you know is the uh, dead kind function. 
respect of tau discriminant function, just the following form, as q and 24 has, is the model form, has uh, weight 12. Okay, but these things, these things I suppose you have seen before. <clears throat> now when you have uh, one more complex uh, coordinate, you have additional transformations. Oh, no, 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 this is uh, on, the on the cylinder. And then, okay, you can see the torus by identification, the time, and then it has a complex structure. Where does the cylinder come from? Oh, because uh, on a DCFT, the boundary of space will be a torus. So we will be putting the conformal field theory on the torus. But what I'll be interesting, uh, interested is on Jacobi forms. So it's just a generalization of what I told you when you have a complex, uh, uh, the Z, uh, the, this uh, complex parameter. I thought that this is the boundary of the S3. Yeah. yeah. S, S2, not the cylinder. No, no, no. You can have, you can put many uh, boundary, uh, the, the um, <clears throat> up to a conformal factor, it can put uh, like a Riemann surface. So a Jacobi form is now an object which has some weight and some what is called index, which I'll explain. Its object um, transforms in the following way. So you have, again, the weight, but now because of this Z dependence, you get this strange uh, phase factor. Okay. Again, this ABCD is always a subtle Z. But besides this transformation, <coughs> you have what is called elliptic, trans elliptic translation. what is called elliptic translations. <coughs> now we can fix the tau, and then you shift Z by lambda, tau, and mu, where lambda and mu are just integer numbers. That's what it's called translation. But along the elliptic variable, tau. <coughs> So this transforms as this thing. So now we can use these properties to show that um, these functions phi omega m have a Fourier expansion. Okay, I just leave it as an exercise. I mean, it's obvious, but so it's a Fourier expansion in tau. is is, a, is variant under translations, and also has a Fourier expansion in z. So this is z. People might be complaining, which are experts. M is always an integer. Could be an alpha integer, it'll have some minus sign, but I'll keep it just an integer, okay? So you have these Fourier expansions. <clears throat> so 
is for expansions, which means that it can expand phi omega m in the following way. <clears throat> For simplicity, I'll restrict this n to be uh, bigger or equal than zero. In some cases, you can have negative here. It'll be called a nearly allomorphic. But for what I want to show, I'll restrict to, to this n bigger or equal zero. And when this, when this, this condition, this is called a weak Jacobi. Everything what I'm trying to uh, do is give you definitions and then I will show you what I want to extract. I mean, I'll, I'll use all these definitions to extract uh, <coughs> the, 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 these four coefficients which count the, the black hole states. So for that, I need to define uh, a polarity. The polarity is just this, um, this combination N minus L squared over 4M. So when you have this condition N bigger equal than zero, you have states, uh, you can have states with, where, for which delta is negative, but they are bounded by minus L over four, besides all the other states which delta bigger equal to zero, okay? That's basically the weak condition means that you have delta where that can be positive, negative. And these states with delta negative uh, are called polar terms. Which will, be, which will play a crucial role in this story. <clears throat> Maybe I'm going too fast. I don't know. Uh, no questions? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Here, and you said it's an integer, but it's always going to be positive? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> if the speed is okay, I'll, we're going to speed up. It happens that because of elliptic uh, translations, you can write uh, the Jacobi form the following way as h mu tau tau z. So, and this is sum over mu. I'll just explain explain what is that. I actually this is mu is just the following is a cosat rule representative of z mod 2mz. It can be, for example, uh, mu from m to minus m, okay? It's your choice. This theta, uh, sorry, to m, and mu. This theta and mu are the theta functions, and they have the following expression. Just a sum over this lattice, q mu plus two n square. So basically, I give you mu, and then you just shift on this lattice, okay, by two m to mn to mn. And this h mu tau, which are allomorphic in tau, are called vector 
valid. Modular, because there's only tau. And forms, because they have some weights and there are multiple transformations. Uh, this H mu tau can be expanded in a Fourier, uh, there's a Fourier expansion for H mu tau, with a slight and very important difference from the rest. So it depends on mu, and R is an integer. Um, <clears throat> they are equal than zero. But this A might not be integer, so it can be fractional. Okay. It's an important difference. I'll just explain what is that. So in what sense they are vector values again? I'll just explain, just the next few lines. So what I want to compute uh, is the C and L, right? So I have to do two Fourier inverse transforms on d tau and dz. Just put phi m tau i l z, okay? That's the definition. These are just Fourier integrals. But now this is h mu tau theta mu z as a sum over mu. Oh. And now it's easy because all the z dependence is on theta. Then you can do the integral from here, this y. <coughs> so the integral integral over z, so projects on sector mu, right? Doing this integral tells you what is mu, and this mu is nothing more than L mod to M. The remaining integral on tau, it tells you that n, when you do this integral on, means that n must be equal to what? A plus r plus r. And then there's a q coming from theta, this one here, which is the L square. Oh, sorry, this, uh, So there's some 4m here missing. <laughs> Plus L squared over 4m. So then you find that A plus R equals minus L squared for m. And it can show, I'll leave this exercise that, <clears throat> so A, A plus R is just a polarity. polarity of the state. So these functions h mu only carry, carry information about the polarities of the states, about this, this charge, this, um, this, this combination of n, l, and m. Okay, this seems very abstract, but I will give examples. Okay, I'll really have to speed up. So to come back to your question, this theta m mu transform under the following way, under model transformations.
here. So they're not really modular. They, they come back to themselves, but there's a matrix mu and u, which relates, uh, they rotate the data functions in that way. And this theta and mu equals one z. Okay, so this get these phases here. And it basically it's this phase that will cancel this A here that I told you can be fractional. So that you have uh, um, allomorphicity. In the most general case, so if you pick a, 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 an arbitrary uh, model transformation, Some metrics here that depends on A, B, C, D, mu and u, and theta of m mu tells it. Okay. So this matrix here is called a multiplier matrix. And now it's very easy to see that if you want. Uh, phi, if you want uh, the combination <clears throat> so if you want the phi omega m so this combination h mu tau theta m mu tau z to be nicely to have this following the properties that I mentioned before more transformations implies that this h mu must transform with the inverse matrix so they cancel So this H so this H mu <coughs> are what's called vector because of because of that property. So when you do a multi information was D minus one off, so there's a minus one off because data functions have uh, weight one off. And then I have to transform with the inverse matrix. Is it? U mu H, uh, sorry, mu tau. That's why they're called vector. They're called the modular forms. Okay, so. Yeah, it depends on the case, then you can compute them. It's hard, but you can, you can compute them. Uh, so I mentioned the MSW, and the MSW is just uh, uh, 10 seconds. In the MSW, you have <coughs> an age mu tau, but the theta functions are not allomorphic. You have some tau bar, tau, tau bar, z. That's why I didn't want to explain detail that. Uh, and that's because in the MSW you can have BPS states. So this is for experts. You can have BPS states uh, due to nonlinear supersymmetry. So you can just excite the right side. You can tau bar, but there's also BPS states. So there's a, a theta uh, which depends on tau and tau bar. But what what you want is this H mu, which is allomorphic, and that it contains information about um, <coughs> uh, the Fourier coefficients. So when you do the, um, the integrals, um, so this R. So when you do the integrals, the Fourier integrals, remember, I, I sorry, I raised that part, that there were the two integrals. So the integral over Z projects on the L sector, so you get a theta function, but all the coefficients of the theta function 
are something like this, right? So all the coefficients are one, and all the information of C and L can be recovered from the age mu. So roughly speaking, the age mu tau uh, <clears throat> is enough to compute C and N L. You can just uh, do it as an exercise. It's very easy. And then he also learned that in conform field theory lessons that uh, something is called a Cardi formula. So you can extract the asymptotic uh, growth of a degeneracy of statistical partition function using modularity. And you can use the same ideas here to extract uh, <clears throat> so you have to extract C mu of R using the model transformations. Actually, there is an exact formula for these coefficients, C mu of R, I'll put just N here. That formula is called the Hadamarker expansion. Basically, you can write the exact Fourier coefficient of, a, of a h mu tau in a very complicated way, but very uh, useful too. So there's a sum over so the c, c mu's such that n bar minus n square um, is more than zero. So the first sum over the terms which are polar. That is, you have the h mu tau. There are some terms here which have negative powers, and then you have the positive. So we just pick the, the, the four coefficients of these negative powers of Q and plug it here. <coughs> and then there's a sum from C equals 1 to infinity. There's an infinite sum of these very complicated objects called a Klusterman sum. Depends on these parameters. So it depends on the polarity of this state, okay, mu and n. There's a sum over the, this, the polar terms, this part here. And then there's some integral, which is a Bessel function. So this is just the integral representation of what is called a modified Bessel function of first kind. Okay. Okay, it's a very complicated formula, has an infinite number of terms, but it's absolutely convergent to a precise integer. Okay. That you can show that. So what is this uh, Klusterman sum? Just uh, Klusterman sum uh, is a very complicated formula, but has roughly the following expression.
C. And then there's a sum, so this is for fixed C. So the sum over D and C, which are co-prime. Then there's a sum over A, such that AD equals one mod C. And now you see the, uh, appearing here this multiplier matrix. So it's a very complicated expression, but you can show that this multiplier matrix has a form like this, as a sum over phases. So Klosterman sums are just sums over phases okay, of this form. D over C, A over C, very complicated. <clears throat> um, why, uh, okay, so now why do I like this formula? Because you can do asymptotic expansion, or well not only asymptotic, you can study asymptotics of this integral. It's very easy to do. So, <clears throat> Um, so if you have that integral, you can just, uh, so dt, some t to some power here, by a over t. And then it's just going to be this by teleport approximation. What you'll find is that this is the exponential of <coughs> 4 pi square root of A modulus B, okay? This is a leading term, and then you can compute corrections to that. I'll just put like order of 1 over A and B. But this approximation is valid only for A much bigger than 1 and fix it. Take a much bigger than one, then they can expand that form. Okay. Okay, I will didn't want to erase these formulas, but <coughs> So for each, so you have a sum over Bessel functions. So there's a C, and there's a sum over the polar terms here. The spectrum, I'll call it spectrum of polar terms, is finite. Okay. That means what I'm what I'm, what I'm saying is that n bar minus nu square for m is smaller or equal than there's a maximum value. And there's a minimum value here, <coughs> which you can compute. I mean, it depends on, on the on the Jacobi form. And so, in this in this expansion, in this regime, you'll have terms which uh, grow faster than others. For example, it's easy to see that. Okay. T mu of n is something like um, C mu of n bar, for which n bar minus nu square over 4m equals the maximum value, exponential of 4 pi minus nu square, maximum value. Okay. And then you have a series of exponentials up to 4 pi, now we can guess it, for m times the minimum value, okay? There's a maximum that starts decaying, decaying. These are all grow exponentially, but as the maximum starts decaying, decaying, and then you have <coughs> the C contributions over C. So we start with two. maximum value, plus dot, dot, dot. Again, so this is the C equals two case. The minimum value, and on and on and on and on, C to infinity.
to say what? To say that this term here Which is the leading term is nothing else than the black hole entropy. So this is just an area you can check. If you check some years computation, uh, this will be area over 4G. Okay, since I have five minutes. But now you have the leading term, then you just can get a bit corrections to this. It's very easy. Or you can check Wikipedia about how to expand the Bessel function. It tells you, tells you what type of corrections you have. But you also have, uh, you also have all these terms here, which though they grow exponentially, they grow exponentially, but they grow much slower because the, the exponential is smaller than this one. And therefore, it'll give rise to non-perturbative corrections. If you take the log, if you take the log of this, if you take the log of this term, then this will become exponentially suppressed relative to area over four. So these are called non-perturbative corrections. Okay, all these terms. Okay, I'll try to finish. There's a term at the front. Is this factor? There's some normalization factor here. So, okay, this is actually, in this limit, okay, so thank you for asking. In this limit for which uh, I'm taking n minus mu square much bigger than one, with fixed, fixed m, in this limit, this thing does not grow. It's just a number, order one, okay? And then you have that, that expansion. But there's a different limit, this expression. So the, there's a different limit which is very important, which is the limit for which um, If I rescale all these parameters, m, lambda, m, and that means that I have a family of Jacobi forms, there's like different uh, CFTs. This is like the n of the, C the, uh, the gauge group of the CFT, roughly speaking. So if you scale all these terms like this, uh, n, 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 Lambda much bigger than one. What happens is that you still have these exponentials here, and so on, till infinity. But these coefficients that multiply the exponentials start growing. So here will be like order one, for example. And then this thing, which was very subleading, starts, can start dominate the expansion. So this coefficient's here. There's some coefficient here in front that might grow exponentially like lambda to some power when you do that. So it's not true anymore uh, what is perturbative and non-perturbative. So you have to redo your computation and so on. <clears throat> and actually, it's a very good question is that, well, if, if, you, if, you, if in this limit, this term is area over four, the, in, uh, you may ask if it, in this limit, you still recover the same leading answer. It could, uh, could have happened that these terms grow so fast that they spoil completely this formula. So <coughs> you have something like this. Uh, CU bars, so like bar, like, I feel like zero. A dot, then you have this new bar, and bar will grow like lambda for pi. Uh, 
So the question is that how do these numbers grow such that this term is still the living term? That's what you want, area over four. And it's still an open uh, question for general superconformal field theories. Uh, how does this grow? What I can tell is that um, for simple examples, okay, if I have how many minutes? One minute, One minute. okay, I'll try to. <clears throat> now it's nice that for uh, T2 times T6 complexifications or T2 times K3, like what Samir might uh, be talking about, uh, these numbers grow, can grow exponentially, but not fast enough. See new. So may grow, grows, can grow exponentially, but not fast enough. And because it don't grow not fast enough, you have still the, um, the black hole entropy area formula. And this is the limit that I think Samir will be studying. Or it's is Ashok's limit when he studies the quantum entropy, is when you take this limit of charges. Um, <clears throat> and in this case, these things do not grow enough. Um, but for general Calabial, the, uh, the problem is not answered. It's not known how these things grow in, in generality. Uh, okay, I think I'll finish here. <clears throat>